So as goals from the routing part of this video, um, this is a basic routing that you can configure um, on the server and I'm not going to include it because the video will become really lengthy and we're going to continue with configuring the web application proxy because this is the important part and this is actually the practical use of the web application proxy alongside with the ADFS. So for this one, I'm going to switch to my domain controller and I'm going to start by installing the ADFS role because we need an ADFS server and ADFS farm in our environment. So I'm going to select the role and click next and I'm going to install the ADFS role and we can configure uh, the, uh, using the ADFS using the wizard afterwards. Now that uh, the installation finished, I'm going to click to configure the federation services. And you can see right here that uh, I will need to create the first federation server in the farm. So I'm going to click next. I'm going to use my uh, domain admin credentials. And for SSL certificate, I don't want to use the NLBDC01. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open an MMC console. And I'm going to add a snap-in, which is going to be certificates for the computer account. Okay. And when I expand and go to personal certificates, I'm going to request a new certificate that is going to be uh, issued by my certificate server, which is again this domain controller. And I'm going to use the web NLB web server, which I'm going to add a common name of ADFS. ADFS.NLBLab.com and click add. So this is going to be the common name for my certificate. And I'm going to enroll. Wait for the wizard to finish en enrolling for this certificate. Okay, succeeded. And now I have my ADFS NLBLab.com certificate. So I'm going to switch back to the wizard, click previous and next to refresh. And this time select the ADFS NLBLab.com certificate. The federation display name is going to be, one second, NLB ADFS click next and um, I'm not going to configure any managed service account I'm going to click select and add my account but for um, if you're deploying this in an environment I think it's going to be a better I recommend using a managed service account not a default user account so I'm going to create the database using the internal data Windows internal database but if you have a SQL server you can uh, use it to store the database in there so I'm going to click next and we'll see um, if the configuration will be able to add this one Okay, um, as I had an ADFS server on this one, I just wanted to show you how it's done. I'm going to just click override, but you won't see this in your environment if you're deploying this on a brand new server. So in my case, I just want to show you how to implement the ADFS configuration. And now um, you can view the script as well if you'd like. And I'm going to click next. The, all the prerequisites finished, so I'm going to click configure to start installing. Okay, now we have successfully installed the ADFS server in my environment. So I'm going to close this one as I don't need it anymore. Close this one as well. So uh, now we have uh, an ADFS server. So I'm going to open the management and just confirm that everything is functioning. Yes, it is. It's able to connect to um, the internal database and it's able to um, I'm able to browse all the settings on this server. So after we have this one, I'm going to show you what needs to be done in order for me, in my case, to implement the uh, web application proxy and publish a website. What I did in my case is I powered on another server. Uh, not this one, but uh, the network server, which is NLB 
NW01 and I've configured this server to have another network card. And you can see if I open the adapter settings, I have two network cards and one network card is for my NLB domain. And if I go to properties, uh, this one is actually configured to access external um, IP addresses and this is going to uh, basically test if this server has connectivity to the internet, which this at the moment does not, but this will basically demonstrate how uh, it's going to connect to the internet. And the other one is my internal network card that connects to my um, internal environment. And in, mo in most cases, this server won't be connected to um, your domain. But uh, just for the test purposes, I'm just going to um, leave it the way it is at the moment. And let me see. This is, this is going to be the NLB lab. I just had to refresh because I saw that it's uh, connected to an un unidentified network, which means that uh, the firewall profile is the public one. So now that I'm connected to the domain network, so uh, as I was saying, this server uh, will not as this will act as our ADFS proxy. In most cases, it won't be connected to your domain and it, it is going to be in a DMZ network. So uh, again, it's going to have one internal network card, one external network card, but it's going to be placed in a DMZ network where it's more secured and you will be only uh, needing to open specific ports to connect the ADFS uh, web application proxy to uh, your ADFS server in your environment. This way you can make things more secure. So let's move and install the ADFS proxy um, row on this server. I'm going to select remote access, next, and install web application proxy. Install. So while this is installing, I'm going to check if there is connectivity to my client and if I switch to my client real fast to show you so this is the the client virtual machine which again I've moved to a public network and this uh, machine is currently with an external IP address for my internal lab and it does not have connectivity to uh, my internal servers so if I try to ping for example NLB DC01 the DNS will not be able to resolve this record and basically this machine is out of my environment. So I'm going to only try to ping the uh, ADFS proxy server and you can see that I have connection to the external IP address of my um, proxy server at the moment only. Now that uh, the row finished installing, I'm going to open the web application proxy wizard. And in here, I need to uh, specify um, the federation service name, which is going to be adfs.nlblab.com. And in order for you uh, to see this record, because this is not automatically created, you need to switch to your DNS. So if I go to my DNS settings and open my noblab.com, you will see that I've manually configured a record for ADFS, which is pointing to my ADFS server. So if you don't have this record created because the uh, proxy server will not be able to connect to, to uh, your ADFS, and I'm going to use again my credentials to connect to the ADFS farm. If I click next, I will be asked to specify a um, certificate for my proxy to connect to the ADFS. And as I don't have one, I'm going to just open another MMC console and request another certificate for my proxy. Of course, what you can do is you can import a, because I'm going to use my internal 
a certificate services for the testing of this video but this is not recommended as i said your server uh, the proxy server will not be connected to your domain and this will not be available for you so what you need to do is instead of uh, requesting a new certificate you will have to import one and most probably in most cases you will use a um, third-party ssl certificate not an internal one so i'm going to click next and again, I'm going to select the NLB web certificate to be issued. Okay, web server. And this time for common name, I will add ADFS lab, lab.com and add this common name for the certificate. And I will need to add another DNS uh, name for alternative, which is going to be adfs.nlblab.com. Okay, and click apply. Okay, and enroll for the certificate. So I'm just waiting for the certificate to be issued to this computer. Okay, so now that we have the certificate, I'm going to switch back. Again, click previous and next to refresh. And this time select the ADFS swap. So next, and it's going to show me the PowerShell command that is going to use to connect this server to my ADFS. And let's see if this will um, configure without any errors. Okay, the web application proxy was configured successfully. Now we have uh, a web application proxy that we are going to use to publish a website. And the website that uh, I will choose to publish is uh, currently located on my VPN server. And if I go to Internet Information Services, I will use the uh, default website which if I click on explore you will see that I don't have any any specific um, website instead I have a custom uh, image of my internet information services um, background and this will be used for me to connect externally via the web application proxy the thing that you need to do in here, because we are going to use a pass-through authentication, is go to authentication and enable Windows authentication and disable an anonymous authentication. If you do not see the Windows authentication in here, you will need to add this role within your IIS. And let me show you if I expand web server. Okay, and security. There it is, the Windows authentication, which I had to manually install in my case. So, as I already have this in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my uh, ADFS proxy and I'm going to publish a website. Another wizard will appear. I'm going to click Next. And instead of using ADFS uh, pre-authentication, um, I said, as I, if you remember, I said in the beginning of the of the video, you have two uh, pre-authentication methods using the ADFS or pass-through. I'm going to select pass-through and we're going to use Windows authentication. So I'm going to name the authentication as NLB web app. And I'm going to specify an external URL, which is going to be HTTPS and then NLB VPN 01 NLB lab.com. Okay, and I'm going to choose the ADFS WAP certificate for this one. The back end server URL needs to be the same as the external URL, and you can see that while I was typing the external URL, the back end filled in as well. So I'm going to click publish. And I have the web application uh, published successfully. So I'm going to click close. And now I have the uh, web application successfully published as uh, with the pass-through authentication. Now to test things, I'm going to switch back to my client virtual machine. 
And in here, if I try to open a website called HTTPS NLB VPN NLB Lab, it's basically going to say that it's not able to reach it. And that is because this client machine does not have any idea where this website is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go ahead and open a command prompt as administrator. And I'm going to go to my hosts file. open the host file as administrator and specify where to look for this uh, website because I don't have internet connectivity at the moment. So NLB VPN 01 NLB lab dot com. I'm going to save the host file. Okay. And now when I try to ping NLB VPN 01 bitlab.com it will respond with my ADFS proxy server so when I try to open the web page once again or let me just close it completely and try to open another edge browser NLP but let's try with HTTPS Okay, um, I think I know what could be the problem with this one is because I did not include the NLB-VPN-01 in the certificate. So if I click continue, it will ask me to authenticate. Okay, and now I have uh, the website which is published through my web application proxy and I'm able to access it externally. If I go to, um, yeah, if I try to see the certificate, I'm not sure where I can see it from the Edge browser, but if you add the name of the actual web server or the actual website in the certificate, this error would not appear. So before I finish the video, I just wanted to show uh, you where exactly you need to add the alternative name. And I have the console right here. so. Um, if I open the certificate that I've requested for my web application proxy and this is the certificate under the details and scroll down a bit you'll see the subject alternative name which is only ADFS and .com. I had to add another DNS name which is uh, which had to be my nob vpn onenoblabcom that way I won't be um, uh, the, the, the error message uh, when we browse the website externally won't be um, visible and the website would be open without any error messages. So basically this is how you implement uh, ADFS proxy and this is a broad overview of the remote access server in Windows Server 2016. If you like the video you can always hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so uh, you will receive notifications for all my latest videos um, while we um, troubleshoot and we learn about Windows Server 2016 and if you don't like the video hit the dislike button and tell me in the comment section what could be could be improved of course if you have any questions implementing this one you can always put them in the comment section and I will try to answer them as soon as possible once again this was Nick from NLB Solutions thank you very much for viewing and see you in the next module